Hello everyone, my name is Dana Warsell. I'm a haematology trainee in the North Central London rotation. This is a short talk with advice and tips for those preparing to sit the FRC PAT Part 2 exam with this title, What I Wish I'd Known. I myself sat the exam in the autumn of 2018 and hopefully you will find this information useful and relevant. I'll start with a quick outline of my talk. I will cover the exam structure briefly and you will find more information available on the RC PATH website. I will discuss how to prepare, especially how to start revision in those first few weeks. I will then cover the relevant resources as well as useful websites and courses available. And I will finally end the talk with tips for those last few weeks of revision. The exam structure. As you know, the exam takes place over three days. On day one, it's morphology day with short and long cases. The second day covers coagulation and transfusion with short answer questions, each over two hours. Day three, it's viva day. It's split into two 30-minute sessions, one for general and malignant, you get two questions for each topic, and one for coagulation and transfusion, again, two questions for each topic. How to prepare and what to do in those first few weeks. My advice would be to start early, typically four to five months prior to the exam. This will give you time to slowly get into it. In terms of how to start, some practical tips of what to do in those first few weeks. Plan your revision. Make a list of the different conditions. And this website, iHematology, gives a nice overview of all the different conditions. Have four folders for general malignant transfusion and coag, where you put all your notes and guidelines into. Make a timeline so that you can follow some sort of structure and schedule, which might change over time, but it will give you something to follow. Very important to think about your microscope. You will have to bring it with you to the exam and be familiar with it. So see what your previous colleagues have done. Where I work, we bought secondhand microscopes from our senior colleagues and then sold them um, to the next cohort of registrars. Some people are able to borrow a microscope from their workplace. But make sure that you look into this early. And then some more tips about planning your study leave, book onto those courses early and look into your study budget to make sure it can cover most of the courses you attend. Find a friend, same as for part one, always helpful to work with colleagues to keep the motivation going. Libraries might not be as relevant now during the pandemic, but it's also a way to think about your workspace and where works best for you, somewhere that's quiet and where you won't be distracted. Find out if there's anywhere that's open on weekends or late evenings, which may be suitable for you. And finally, morphology teaching. You may have weekly morphology teaching at work, and if you don't, then don't hesitate to approach consultants and ask them to teach you morphology prior to the exam. Revision material. This is what worries most of us. The exam is so complex and long, but there's no single textbook or set of guidelines to follow. Instead, it's a mixture of stuff. But I promise you that once you start your revision, it will all start to make sense. On this slide, I'm covering the core knowledge for haematology in the four topics of general malignant transfusion and coagulation. You'll get most of your information from the BCSH guidelines. For transfusion, you will need to look into the NHS BT guidelines as well as the annual shot reports. And for malignant, I myself use the Pan London Hemato Oncology Clinical Guideline. The How I Treat papers are help, very helpful for additional information. And the four textbooks, which are often used for the exam preparation, are here the Hofbrand's Essential Hematology, which will give you a general overview, and you can use this to add to your notes. The two Barbara Bain books, which are helpful for morphology and HPLC. And finally, the clinical hematology book, which is useful because it's written in a short answer question style. And so very similar to what you'll be expected to answer in the exam. Websites. These are very helpful, particularly for the practical aspect of the exam. 
By that I mean the material which can't be revised from a textbook, such as NECWAS, antibody panels, HPLC and morphology. I've listed the most commonly used websites here and you can have a look for yourself. At the bottom, I've just mentioned Twitter, which was a major discovery for myself in the months preceding my exam. I started to follow these inspiring consultant hematologists, which often posted about new trial data, interesting clinical cases or morphology slides. And it personally really helped me during the exam. So I'd recommend you follow them and hopefully it will help you too. Courses. As you can see, there is a long list of courses available to help you prepare for the exam. I may even have forgotten some. The most important piece of advice here is to make sure that you plan your study leave and study budget well in advance to allow you to benefit from some of these courses. And I would recommend if you were able to attend at least one course, it would be the top one, the Kingston Revision course by Dr. Vishal Jayakar, which is absolutely excellent. What to do in those last few weeks of revision? I believe that this is the time to focus on the practical aspects of the exam. Firstly, morphology. Keep on doing more and more morphology and make sure you time yourself. Mock vivas. If you haven't approached your consultant and senior registrars for mock vivas, now is the time. NECWAS, make sure that you are familiar with all the common scenarios. And if you haven't visited the laboratory to try and understand how the commonly used tests for coagulation and transfusion are performed, make sure you do. Antibody panels, HPLC and question banks, these are available from the website I've mentioned. And finally, podcasts. This is always a good thing to do on your way to work. And I've mentioned some of the podcasts I used to listen to, such as the Blood Bank Guide, Blood Education and Plenary Session. Final tips for the exam. This is my last slide. Be familiar with your microscope. You'll have to set it up on the day. I was advised not to use any oil for morphology, so you may want to consider doing this too. Bring a timer so that you can answer your questions in a timely manner. The, some of the favorite topics of the exam are always pregnant women, especially in clotting and transfusion, the inherited platelet disorders for morphology, and all the rarities in general. Know how to describe the commonly used coagulation and transfusion tests, and keep on doing morphology. This is it. Best of luck for your exam.